the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Together, reducing fraud worldwide. Predictive analytics is an area of technology and study where people use techniques based on mathematical theory. So they apply statistical theory and rigor to these problems for data analytics. And what that allows them to do is they then can make predictions about the data. They can interpret past data, past events, and predict how events will occur in the future. Social network analysis is a set of techniques and tools that allows you to see relationships from an individual or an organization. So say you want to know if organization A has any relationship with some organization outside of its immediate network. This allows you to build a network, so a graph, and see how many connections are there between organization A and this other organization. And this has developed quite a bit, especially with the increased prominence of social networking. So it's easy to identify relationships between individuals or organizations. And in the context of fraud, this is very powerful because obviously if there's, say, an organization on an OFAC list or some other government list, you can quickly determine, say, if your third-party vendor it has any relationship with them. Textual analytics is really developing quickly as well. Similar to AI and machine learning, textual analytics with technologies like big data have allowed us to look at data for more than just keywords, more than just concepts, and actually doing linking and predictive analytics based on individuals' writing patterns, writing styles, organizational document types, really delving into that. And in the context of fraud, it's going to be very valuable to combine that where you can look at communications alongside of quantitative analysis in your standard type of fraud prevention program. I would say small and mid-sized companies actually have advantages over large companies when it comes to having access to data analytics. And cloud computing has really made that available. It's leveled the playing field where there's relatively low cost to spin it up and you have access to some of these advanced tools that are mostly open source. So as long as you can have access to data analytics professionals and can build a team, there's relatively low cost as far as building your own data analytics program within an organization. The first step to building a data analytics team really is to decide what are your goals. You don't want to have data science professionals or data analytics professionals just for the sake of having them. You want to make sure there's an operational goal and be able to work towards that. So that's the first step. Really understand why do you need this and then determine the cost to decide how are we going to go about this and do we even need to.